libs of TikTok. We've seen a lot about this subject online. Uh, I didn't initially comment on this because I didn't know what libs of TikTok was. I mean, I heard of it, but I assumed it was just like a lib TikTok cringe compilation Twitter account. Uh, apparently, it's much more than that. This account will pull random TikToks of teachers. And if that teacher is too woke or comes out to their students or something, then that person, this account, will try to get that particular teacher fired. So uh, people online, internet sleuths, have dug up who this person is, this anonymous person behind this account that is basically doing targeted harassment of LGBTQ plus people. Um, and then Taylor Lorenz of the Washington Post wrote an article about this very thing, uh, revealing the name that was already public information. But to my understanding, what Taylor Lorenz did after her name was revealed was just confirm the identity by reaching out to members of uh, this account's family. Now, it's not like Taylor Lorenz posted the address online. She went to the address herself to confirm the identity. Um, so there's talk of whether or not this was doxing. This has been an ongoing conversation with with journalism and like what is and isn't ethical. For example, the inventor of Bitcoin was supposedly doxxed and there was a big conversation about this. Uh, but in my opinion, what Taylor Lorenz did, I don't believe that this is doxing. If she were to post like the address and the phone number of this individual, that would absolutely be unethical journalism. That would be doxing. Uh, but this person, they just had their name revealed and... I'm sorry, this account has influenced public policy and has harassed, like actually bragged about getting LGBTQ plus teachers fired from their jobs. So you don't get to hide behind anonymity while you terrorize other people. And don't be a fucking coward. Like it's your name, right? Say the things that you're saying, do the things that you're doing with your full chest, right? Like I come out here, I take a stand and then I own it. And I'm not afraid of the consequences of what I do or say because I feel like what I'm doing is ethic ethically good. But this person, they hide behind anonymity because I think that they know that what they're doing is terrible, right? They're canceling teachers. I thought that cancel culture was bad, but they're canceling teachers and harassing people and they're screeching and playing the victim now that their name was revealed. Um, and again, the name was already revealed. Taylor Lorenz just confirmed that this is indeed the person. But now th they're doing the whole, uh, I'm the victim, starting a Patreon and a Substack. I mean, it doesn't take much to grift the right. But let's just read a little bit of Taylor's article here. Because what she's doing here, this is this is good journalism. I think that the public does have a right to know who is harassing, doing targeted harassment of LGBTQ plus people. So on March 8th, a Twitter account called Libs of TikTok posted a video of a woman teaching sex education to children in Kentucky, calling the woman in the video a predator. The next evening, the same clip, clip was featured on Laura Ingram's Fox News program, prompting the host to ask, when did our public schools, any schools, become what are essentially grooming centers for gender identity radicals? Libs of TikTok reposts a steady stream of TikTok videos and social media posts, primarily from LGBTQ plus people often including incendiary framing designed to generate outrage. Videos shared from the account quickly find their way to the most influential names in right-wing media. The account has emerged as a powerful force on the internet, shaping right-wing media, impacting anti-LGBTQ plus legislation, and influencing millions by posting viral videos aimed at inciting outrage among the right. The anonymous account's impact is deep and far-reaching. Its content is amplified by high-profile media figures, politicians, and right-wing influencers. Its tweets reach millions with influence spreading far beyond its more than 648,000 Twitter followers. Libs of TikTok has become an agenda setter in right-wing online discourse and the content it surfaces shows a direct correlation with the recent push in legislation and rhetoric directly targeting the LGBTQ plus community. So if you're this anonymous entity who's an agenda setter, if you are going on national television networks, I mean, at some point, you've got to expect people to get more curious and try to figure out who you are. And your name was revealed. Again, most of us online who do political commentary, who try to set the agenda, we already reveal our names to you because we're not fucking cowards. But this person, again, wants to be hateful, wants to cancel others, but doesn't want to get canceled themselves. I don't know if this person does uh, this hate shit full time. But I'm sure that they'd be worried that an employer wouldn't want to hire somebody who's like this giant online bigot, right? 
So the question is like, would you be okay with unmasking a clans member or would you allow them to hide behind their anonymity? That's, that's I think, like not necessarily a one-to-one -one comparison, but it's pretty close, right? And I think that at a minimum, just knowing the name of the person who is directing mobs of hate to just random teachers who share their experience yeah sorry you can't you can't do that that's not acceptable so uh let's go through a little bit here the account has been promoted by podcast host joe rogan of course he should take responsibility for this it's been featured in the new york post the federalist the post millennial and uh glenn greenwald amplified it to his 1.8 million followers and called himself the account's godfather can we just pause for a moment and reflect on that Glenn Greenwald is a gay man, and he called himself the godfather of this anti-gay hate account. I mean, at this point, he's functionally Dave Rubin 2.0, just a little bit more savvy and accomplished more than Dave Rubin. But he's doing exactly what Dave Rubin does now, just propaganda for the right. And in this instance, he's running interference for a hate account that has gotten teachers fired for being LGBTQ+. It's truly disgusting, and I have no respect for gay people that sell out their entire community for clout or clicks, or I don't even know what the fuck Glenn Greenwald is doing lately, but I think that he should be ashamed of himself, and I know that he's smart enough to acknowledge that what he's doing is gross. I know that about him. With Dave Rubin, I think that maybe he feels bad about the response from his right-wing colleagues, but I don't think he's smart enough to realize that what he's doing is actually really making the world a, a, you know, a worse place. Glenn Greenwald knows. Glenn Greenwald is smart enough to know. So that's what makes it really disgusting. Um, so basically, this entire uh, article is just talking about this influential person. And it's the name. That's it. Name. Chaya Rychik. This is the person who is terrorizing gay teachers. Um, and they didn't hide their identity very well in the first place because this was their original Twitter, Twitter handle and it just kept like evolving. So the libs of TikTok was originally just her name, but since it blew up now and since it's known for hatred, they want to hide behind anonymity. So, um, what's interesting to me is that after all this talk about doxing, they posted this image, uh, which I don't even feel comfortable showing you because it shows so much like you'd never post your own neighborhood. They dox themselves more than Taylor Lorenz doxed them supposedly, right? And again, Taylor just confirmed that the name that the internet dug up, it was that person, right? And so she wanted to know more. This is journalism. And journalists are going to go to people's houses and interview them. It's just a matter of like, what do you think ethically is necessary for journalists? You know, there's Fox News hosts like Je Jesse Waters. He's ambushing people. I, I think that he, wasn't there a video of him ambushing some random person who heckled Melania Trump? Do you regret verbally abusing Ivanka Trump on the plane? You harassed a woman with her baby on a flight. You proud of that? Real class act, aren't you? Now you're afraid to show your face? Fox News uh, and conservatives, they have a double standard. What they do is not doxing or harassment, but what the left does or journalists do is bad if it affects one of them. But this dipshit posted an image of their neighborhood and they still like this is accurate they like, are not accurate it's current they haven't taken this down so i mean like if you're worried about doxing you take this down you don't share pictures of your neighborhood uh but they're screeching more about their name but i don't want to focus on that because it distracts you from the real story here and that this account is despicable it is a hate account and anyone defending it they're not allies, they're enemies to the LGBTQ plus community. And I wanted to share this really insight insightful thread here from the serfs. So he explained why this account is so bad and what it does. So since there seems to be a lot of confusion about the libs of TikTok saga, including from people on the left who are buying into a lie that it's just a site that posts videos and that it's LGBTQ plus people that makes themselves look bad. Here's a thread with receipts. Okay. First and foremost, the account would frequently take videos of teachers either discussing how they're trans or gay, explaining why they're scared of anti-LGBTQ plus laws or how it affects their class environment. Then libs of TikTok would state that they're pedophiles or grooming children. Okay. Teacher brags about grooming kids. Minnesota preschool teacher admits to grooming kids. So teacher, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. 
teacher at uh, Pike schools. And look, th they're citing the actual school here, right? Pike schools um, doesn't want, I'm guessing this is a district, doesn't want a parent to find this TikTok. She leads a GSA, Gay Straight Alliance, which is necessary for schools. So that way, like young kids who are LGBTQ have a resource um, and let students tell their parents it's a study group. Yeah, that's called being safe because not all kids have an environment where they're safe to come out to their parents. Some of these kids end up getting kicked out. Like there are LGBTQ um, shelters that exist for a reason for young people because they get kicked out when they come out to their parents. And some of them don't even come out to their parents, but their parents sus uh, suspect that they're gay because maybe their son acts a little bit too effeminate uh, and they end up getting kicked out. So it's important that these spaces exist for LGBTQ plus youth. We have seen multiple examples already of teachers grooming kids um, in a GSA club behind parents' back. So now GSA, something that is necessary for LGBTQ plus youth is grooming right? It's insane. Um, hi, uh, something. Why are you grooming kids? Um, and basically citing this person here, saying their name, putting them on blast, telling all 600,000 Twitter followers, hey, this person is a pedophile. You should probably harass this person. It's disgusting. That's what this account does. The libs of TikTok directly called for teachers to be fired. They also spread a false conspiracy theory about litter boxes for students who identify as cats being placed in Michigan schools and then implicated a specific district. Oh, and by the way, the uh, owner of this account is a capital insurrectionist. Shocker. Any teacher who utters the words, I came out to my students, should be fired on the spot because that would be grooming. Now, I think a lot of people conceptualize grooming as you sit down and you have a conversation with someone, hey, I'm gay. But for gay people, that's not the most representative thing uh, that I would refer to as coming out because uh, you're you're in this ongoing coming out process all throughout your life. Every time you start a new job, you come out. And oftentimes you're not coming out in the traditional sense. You're just casually mentioning your husband or your partner or something like that. And so this person thinks that you should be basically fired on the spot if you come out. That is quintessential bigotry. Uh, at a recent school board meeting, it was revealed that a Michigan school placed the litter boxes in the bathroom for students that identify as cats. Unbelievable. Absolutely fake news. But of course, you know, this account, it riled up the chuds and got them to believe it. Numerous teachers have reported on the severe harassment they've received. The libs of TikTok founder has boasted that several teachers have been fired as a result of being featured on the account. And you can see what this account does. It says, hey, this person, Michael Johnson, is grooming children. And this person is mad that their name was revealed after they grew prominent because they're such a big hate account. Libs of TikTok communicates openly with Ron DeSantis' press secretary, Christina Pachal. They've collaborated on direct, uh, directly targeting LGBTQ plus teachers and publicly identifying them. So talk about doxing these motherfuckers, the Libs of TikTok account and their, you know, uh, their friends, they're doxing people, but they don't want their name revealed. These stories are all then amplified by Joe Rogan, Glenn Greenwald, and Tucker Carlson, who helped the account reach millions of new people again, spreading false claims and conspiracy theories. The Washington Post article does not publish the founder of Libs of TikTok's personal address, family address, or phone number. And that would be bad, right, if they did do that. If they said, hey, here's this hate account, this is their address, God, it'd be really bad if anyone confronted them. Nobody's saying that that's what should happen, but I think that the public has a right to know who's behind this account that is wreaking havoc in the LGBTQ plus community. Now, uh, Matt Binder shared this here, throwback to when Libs of TikTok smeared a suicide prevention hotline for LGBTQ plus youth as a grooming organization. They've deleted it since, but here it is. What kids were uh, they protecting here? The Trevor Project is a grooming organization. I don't know that this has been quantified, but the Trevor Project has probably saved thousands of LGBTQ plus lives, right? That's the organization, for those of you who don't remember, that emerged out of the It Gets Better campaign after Gay Kid after Gay Kid was killing themselves because of harassment. And this person is saying this organization to stop gay kids from killing themselves, they're grooming kids. It's insane. So the alternative is this resource doesn't exist for gay people and they do kill themselves. It seems like the libs of TikTok account would prefer that. They'd prefer gay kids to die 
than for them to be groomed or whatever. Like, it, it's truly morally reprehensible. It's morally reprehensible. It's gross. Fuck anyone who defends this account. Now, there's a couple of good points that I wanted to share here. Uh, Z Squirrel says, The lips of TikTok account once tried to get a black teacher fired for having a hammer and sickle in their Twitter bio and making a post recommending leftist books so uh, you know they really care about the rights of private citizens expressing political views without harassment. And as Dave the Bronx Bull points out here, when someone posts my full name and occupation publicly, that's bad. But when I post someone else's full name and occupation publicly and I tag them on Twitter for all of my hate mob to go uh, right towards them, that's, that's okay. It's a double standard. It's so fucked up. Now, um, as Keffels points out here, it's worth mentioning that Groomer was used on Twitter 40 times on the first day of 2022 and was used 1,700 plus times after Florida passed the Don't Say Gay bill. The tactic they are using is to conflate members and supporters of the LGBTQ plus community with pedophiles to dehumanize us. By deflating or by conflating LGBTQ plus people with pedophiles, they're signaling to their base that we do not deserve rights and any amount of suffering they cause us is justified. This is not a new tactic and was used throughout the gay liberation movement and AIDS pandemic. And Keffels is absolutely correct here because it's easier to demonize someone and get them fired from their job when you conceptualize them as like a predator and you demonize them. So just getting somebody who's gay fired from their job, it feels icky, right? Even if you're a homophobe. But if you change the way that you view them in your mind and you think of them as a sexual predator, it's a lot easier to, in your mind at least, justify them getting fired, justify sending a mob of hate towards them, right? So then you have people like Sagar and Jetty. There's a real story about how libs of TikTok, by simply posting videos, became objectively one of the most important conservative activists in the entire country. Taylor Lorenz refuses to engage with the actual content slash why it resonates and chooses to try and destroy her instead. First and foremost, if this dumb fuck conservative thinks that doxing teachers and harassing teachers is literally conservative activism and you're still a conservative, then that shows that your entire uh, moral viewpoint is completely fucked up because if as a leftist left-wing activism didn't consist of like organizing unions and doing marches but it consisted of just simply doxing and harassing um i don't know trump supporters who are disabled i would think man maybe i don't want to be associated with these people but this dipshit is basically saying the quiet part loud no no, no this is activism for us we don't believe in anything i don't believe in universal health care i don't believe in uh anything that people actually want so the culture war is the activism like he's admitting this isn't that insane that they would say this out loud incredible tucker carlson makes the case as to why it's in the public interest to know who is behind libs of tiktok not know the address not harass them but know who it is that's making teachers lives hell the press secretary for the so it's christina pushaw who's the press secretary for the governor of florida ron DeSantis. it was partly in response to videos that she saw on libs of tiktok that florida ultimately banned public school teachers from lecturing kindergartners about sex that's no law it's one of those popular laws in the state the majority of democrats support it so libs of tiktok was getting results as good journalism does not bad for a twitter feed so of course that twitter feed had to be shut down so it was Christina Pusha. And it was temporarily suspended. And yeah, so if you are an account that's so influential that you're actually helping lawmakers craft public policy, yeah, sorry, you don't get to hide behind your anonymity forever. And at a minimum, we should know who the person is that's pushing all of this hate. And what Tucker said about it being popular is actually correct. Yes, Democrats support this as well. It shows you how powerful the culture war is. And I don't even like calling it a culture war because like, yeah, it's technically culture war, but culture affects people's lives in a concrete way. Like there was this couple um, that was harassed on an Amtrak because they had their kids with them, their same sex couple. And the, uh, the conservative who is a Kool-Aid drinking Fox News viewer was screaming at them, calling them pedophiles, telling the kids, hey, remember what I told you? You were kidnapped. They kidnapped you. They're pedophiles. They're groomers. So that's basically the result uh, of, you know, the culture war. It actually affects people's lives. Um, but Tucker Carlson here, he's 
inadvertently making the case as to why it's so important that people know who this account is. Is this account some like bank, uh, you know, right wing bankrolled uh, account? Is it an organization? Is it multiple people? I, I think it's important to know. But um, he's going to defend libs of TikTok by saying that um, it was a foreign intelligence operation involving the German government and quite possibly the Biden administration. Um, and what he's referring to is the article that we read by Taylor Lorenz. That's like a foreign intelligence operation. So not the brightest take here, but nonetheless, uh, Tucker Carlson, who is a bigot, a very, very vile bigot, is going to defend this account, of course. Was not the work of Taylor Lorenz, the fearless journalist who cries on TV from a PTSD, no. It was a foreign intelligence operation designed to silence and intimidate an American citizen. Wait. The person who's silencing and intimidating is the libs of TikTok account. Teachers will share their experience and this person will put them on blast. There was one video, I couldn't find it beforehand, but the teacher was like, hey, one of my students asked if I was gay and I said yes. And we had a conversation about it for a while. And this person put them on blast. I mean, kids are curious about these things. Gay people exist and they're going to learn about that. That's not some sort of a crime. It's not grooming to acknowledge that gay people exist. If acknowledging that uh, gay people exist is grooming, then uh, acknowledging that some kids have a mommy and daddy. And if that mommy and daddy kiss in, from, in front of their kids, then that's grooming as well, right? But they only view it as gro grooming if you are uh, LGBTQ+. But if you're straight, it's not grooming. Um, it, it doesn't make sense, right? It's logically inconsistent. But it's it's not supposed to be consistent. It's supposed to be a hate campaign. And that's uh, it's, it's actually paying dividends. Is that legal? Did the Biden administration have any role in this particular intel op? What? Why is the German government trying to shut down an American Twitter account posting about American teachers? And since she was the recipient, the willing recipient of this information from a foreign government designed to destroy an American citizen, why hasn't Taylor Lorenz at the very least registered under the Foreign Agent Registration Act, FARA? In other now, words- I'm not sure really what he's referring to. The person who I think originally found out the name of this person was a software developer i have no idea the origin of their country but either way he's grasping at straws here he likes that there's this one giant account that terrorizes lgbtq plus people that sows hate in fact i'm sure tucker carlson is jealous that this account is so effective because what tucker has done in four years is a lot of damage but somehow this account that came out of nowhere has done more damage, at least when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights, than Tucker Carlson. So Tucker Carlson is probably like, fuck, how do I get on your level? Because I'm impressed by the amount of hate that you're sowing. Now, of course, later on in the program, we have useful idiots for uh, this anti-gay hate account. Glenn Greenwald going on to defend them. And as I tweeted here, Fox News brings on gay man to defend anti-gay hate account. That's exactly how it's done, folks. And the reason why I said that is because, you know, if Tucker Carlson defends this anti-gay hate account, then logically you're going to say, oh, well, it must be because he's homophobic. But if you bring on a gay man who's willing to be a useful idiot for you and you get him to say that this account is based, well, then you kind of have some plausible deniability, do you not? You kind of get to say, well, how can you call me hateful? I brought on a gay man to talk about this, and he says that it's fine. He says that what this account does is not bigoted and hateful. And so I think that he, as a gay man, would know more. But what's funny is that Glenn Greenwald is defending this account who thinks he's a groomer probably, right? I'm sure that they wouldn't call him that to his face because he's their useful idiot. But you have children, Glenn. They think you're a kidnapper. They think you're a groomer. So like Dave Rubin, he's willing to sell out his own community for clout, for clicks. I don't know how much he gets paid for each Fox News appearance, but I can guarantee you, like for me, it would never be enough, right? Because I, I would never do what he's doing because what matters most is living with myself and knowing that I'm doing good, not harm to my own fucking community. But he doesn't give a shit because he's a sellout. And he doesn't have to sell out. That's the thing. Like, Dave Rubin was desperate for fame and clout. And so we understand why, you know, Dave Rubin was craving enough, enough to do what he did. With Glenn Greenwald, 
He's an accomplished Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. The motherfucker had to do nothing. He could sit on his ass for the rest of his life and, you know, fade into obscurity. And everyone on the left would respect him and love him for his reporting, not just in Brazil, but with the Snowden leaks. But instead, he chooses to align with the right. And now he is supporting this account. He's the godfather of the libs of TikTok account, which has gotten gay people fired. Now this all comes, this cancel culture account comes after the right. People like Glenn Greenwald screech about cancel culture being bad, but it's okay. Cancel culture for me, but not thee. That's the way that the right wing operates. Mike is a total shit lib. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.